Hi, this is Nick at Atlantic Laser Scanning. Today we've got a large indoor project, one large room. Uh, we will be doing some registration with it. We've had some people contact us and ask us about uh, if they need targets or what their process is, if they're going to be scanning uh, indoor but large indoor areas. Uh, in this particular scan project, we are going to look at how we're going to integrate a scan cluster with a, out, a, a outlier scan. So to begin with, we're going to jump straight into the registration tag here. Uh, we've already saved our project and we are not using targets. So jumping directly into registration, performing an automatic registration. And uh, as we've gone through most of the videos, uh, we've got uh, different types of registration methods. Uh, the default setting for non-target registration is going to be top view and cloud to cloud. Uh, you can obviously see a target based, top view based, cloud to cloud all listed. Uh, if you are using sphere targets or checkerboard targets, you would first go into the pre-processing option at the top of the screen and you would tell the, the uh, scene software to look for whichever target you are actually using. If you're using spheres, you would tell them not only that you're using spheres, but to double check the size of the spheres and whatnot. So because we're not using any targets, we're going directly into registration and we are going to stick with the default top view and cloud to cloud. <clears throat> For those of you who aren't familiar, that process is where the scene software first looks at the, the uh, scans from a top view. It rotates number one and number two, looking for uh, common walls, common you know geometry that might be lines of furniture or equipment, and then starts to put the scans together, looking at them from the top down. Once that is together, then it moves to a cloud to cloud registration which is where the uh, scene software will look for a common XYZ points between scans. Uh, most of the time, the top view has already put the scan project together. Uh, the cloud to cloud will then uh, tighten up or, or make more accurate the scan registration. Sometimes you'll see, uh, you know, it will actually pull a uh, scan into a cluster on its own before you even get a chance to see it, uh, just because maybe uh, I don't know, sometimes that happens where cloud to cloud will actually grab and, and do a little better job of putting the scan uh, registration together than just the top, uh, the top view. But right now we're gonna use the default top view cloud to cloud uh, registration method. Top right hand corner, register and verify. We have an auto cluster created. So as this begins to load, we'll go ahead and say that the we're going to keep it, jump here into our registration page. As you can see, scan 41 uh, is not in the cluster that was created by the scene software and auto registration. We'll jump into the explore group here. We'll just take a look. 41 obviously would be a scan right next to 40. <clears throat> so uh, there's a couple different things that we can do here. Uh, first of all, we will load the scans and uh, then look at this in a correspondence view. Now, even with, uh, without all the scans loaded, you can see that this should be easy to put together. Uh, now, most of the time we can just uh, grab grab the scans, drag them over to where you think they should be. And uh, they, you know, with a, uh, an update of the scan ma uh, manager, it, they should come together. But that's not always the case. Even when things are as obvious as what this looks like it might be, it may not come together. So we line it up. Now we want to also look at this from a couple different angles because we may have an elevation issue. And it looks as though we're okay. So we'll go up here to our main uh, scan manager. Let's see, this is our cluster. Here's the main scan manager, which is going to handle both the cluster and the scan. 
the auto cluster immediately locks our scan manager, which is what we wanted to do. We wanted the uh, scene software to just try to put two things together, the cluster and the scan. So because we've now put these on top, uh, match them up best we can by eye, we will update the scans and do a cloud to cloud and see if that helps out. Now, as we can see, we actually do have a yellow light on our scan manager here. Uh, we'll take a look at just how accurate we are. Looks like we're about 10 millimeters, which for most jobs just isn't going to cut it. So uh, let's take a look at a way that we might be able to improve this. We'll close this down. There's several different ways that you can uh, improve this accuracy. This is, again, just going to be one option. Uh, I'm going to go into our settings in the top right-hand corner, and we're going to go to the old user interface. The reason being, there is an option right here in our toolbar called Create Correspondence Split View. Now, while that might be available in the new uh, interface, this is just a really simple way to get into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, open it up. It's going to give us two separate windows. And what we're then going to do is we've got the outlier scan number 41. Obviously, the scan closest to it is number 40. So what we're going to do is put both of these scans into this split view and begin to look for commonalities, uh, common walls and things like that. So. I think it's pretty obvious that uh, uh, we can do that pretty quickly here. So uh, we've got this small toolbar here. And uh, since we're not using sphere targets, flat targets, we are going to be grabbing the planes. So we click on this and we start matching up uh, planes in the uh, each of the scans. So as you can see, the scene software hasn't recognized that they're the same yet. So what we want to do is force the correspondence. So that is going to be plane two. We want to go back into our another plane. We're going to grab another uh, wall that's at a different angle. <clears throat> and once again, we're going to force that correspondence. As we get further along, the software will begin to recognize where it is and you won't have to force the correspondences. So again, we're going to take walls, different walls in each one of these here, force our correspondences. Now we can also look at a floor and in doing that we'll give ourselves yet another angle here so we've got the cord sitting in this one we'll identify those two there now you see where the software is now identified where it is in space and at this point we can go and find correspondences between the show scans. We can clear correspondences, force correspondences. Let's force the correspondences. We can close this down. Now, if you look in the tree on the left, you'll see all the different planes between the two scans. They've got green lights on most of them. The scan fit is looking really nice and yellow. Now, we'll close that cluster so we can see exactly what we're doing here. We can take scan 41 and we can, once we unlock the scan cluster, we can drop 41 into that scan cluster. <clears throat> now, when doing this, we're going to have to go back to the scan manager, which was yellow and is now red. We're going to right click on it and we're going to update the scans. Now, this is very important. The default 
scan update is going to be top view based. If you use top view base, you are not going to take into account what we had just done grabbing the, the, the planes. We're going to go into cloud to cloud. That's going to take into account what we just did. So we'll hit OK and we'll let that cook. Now we take a look instead of yellow lights, we've got green lights and our scan point tensions have come down to 1.2 millimeters from 10. So last thing to do here is to come up to our main scan manager after we lock the cluster and just simply right click on the main scan manager, update it, same thing, but it should update almost immediately because it's been done already in the cluster and that should have the exact sort of same results uh, as this. So I hope this helps you guys if you've got an outlier. Uh, like I said, there's different ways to do this, uh, but this is a way that, uh, that we use here quite often, and at least it's our first option. Good luck, and let us know if there's anything that you run into that we might be able to help with.